neither did I. And if we had, I'm not so sure we would have made it any different. Uh, correction. Drop that whole speech. Substitute, um, substitute sorry. What is there to be sorry about? We didn't make the world. And if we had, what a mess we would have made of it, being what we are. Sorry. What is there to be sorry about? We didn't make the world. And if we had, what a mess we would have made of it, being what we are. Oh, Bob, I've been redoing that speech at the end of Act Two. Type it up and send it to the theater. That'll mean Pierce landing some new lines. I never learned the old lines, so some new ones don't make any difference. Most of the time, opening night, I thought he was in some other play. And I wished I was in some other theater. Well, that's no business of mine, but you've got a play that's a smash hit in New York. and looks like being one here. Why not leave it alone? What do you suggest I do instead? Take a walk around the National Gallery or sit here and rot? Or maybe go back to New York and rot? Get it over to the theater right away. Good afternoon. Is this Mr. Hannon's apartment? That's right. Well, I, I wonder if I might see him. Would you please tell him Gene Lennox is here? Is he expecting you? No. Excuse me, but are you a friend of Mr. Hannon? Well, I, I think of myself as one. Well, won't you wait inside? Excuse me, ma'am. Ask Miss Lennox to come in. Will you come in, please, Miss Lennox? Hello, Phil. Hello, Jean. What are you doing in London? Oh, just a vacation. I, uh... Wanted to drop in and say hello. And congratulate you on getting such wonderful notices. You came 3,000 miles for that. No, of course not. Phil, why didn't you let me know when you were leaving New York? You know the answer to that. Johnny and Pat are in London. Have you called them? I haven't called anybody. I've been busy working. Phil, I don't see why you insist on acting this way. Jean, we've been all over this a dozen times. When a thing is finished, I like to forget about it. Let's talk about something else, shall we? You like the apartment? It's lovely. Come and look at this beautiful view. Houses of Parliament over there. There's Big Ben watching over us. They're doing some work on them, as you can see. Charing Cross Station. Over there we have Waterloo Bridge and St. Paul's Cathedral. We even have some prehistoric ruins that date right back to 1941. Don't be so bitter, Phil. It doesn't help you. Bitter? Me? I'm a successful playwright who's just had a hit. A big hit. What have I got to be bitter about? I'm all right as long as people leave me alone. <laughs> I wish people would leave things where they're supposed to be. I have to go out now, Jean. Were you going someplace? No, just back to the apartment, I guess. Oh, you're taking an apartment. Well, I must come and see your view sometime. Bob, I'm going out. Shall I come along? No, I'm only going to the pub. The Eagle? Yes. Are you sure you don't want Quite me? sure, quite sure. Look, if you must do something, you can call a cab for Miss Lennox. And when you finish typing up that new stuff, you can pick me up with the car at the Eagle and drive me to the theater. Goodbye, Jean. Goodbye, Phil. 
Nice of you to look me up. You want a cab, Miss Lennox? Oh, no, thank you. I can manage. You mustn't do that, you know. What? Well, fuss over him like that. He'll go crazy if you do that. I don't like him to go out alone. I know, but he must if he thinks he can. Where is this bar? It's two streets down, across the road. Across the road? Yeah. You can see it from here. came over here the last time, nearly two months. Is he drinking? Well, not exactly drinking, but <laughs> not exactly not. Have you known him a long time, Miss Lennox? Well, yes, I, I was his secretary for three years in New York and, and here, and wherever he wanted to go. We were engaged to be married. And then it happened. He didn't like having me around. So I was fired. I'm sorry. What's it to be this evening, dear? Scotch, please, double. Soda or water? Neither, straight. You're an American, aren't you? Yes. Then you'd like a bit of ice in it, eh? No, thanks. I've, I've learned to like it your way. Dear. It'll be a long, dreary story, and one I'm sure you've heard many times before. But not from a young fella like you. Will that do? <laughs> That'll do fine. Thank you. I don't want anything to do with it, Mr. Evans. I don't like the sound of it. You like the money, all right. A little bit more than this last job. Much more. But how do I know what you're going to do with it? You don't have to worry about that. You just do what I tell you. 
and take the money and forget it. Would you like me to say a little prayer? You promised me what, when I went to the church. That was last night. Well, this is much bigger. Come on, sir. Mary arrives in the tent. You get out and meet him and take care of it. And we take it off your hands and give you your money. What could be simpler than that? But you don't understand. I might get to life you with have time for that. No. No, Mr. Evans, I won't do it. I won't. Oh, you. Oh, listen. In just five minutes. So think that over. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't. No. I wouldn't do that. Just as long as you do as you told. Come on, pull yourself together. There's nothing to cry about. Come on, you'll be on velvet. All right. There's no decency left anyway. When do you want me? Night of the night. Same address. And I take you down and you start the job on the tenth. All right. Can I go now? What's the hurry? I have another drink. No, I have to get back. Her ladyship's going to a concert tonight, and there'll be nobody to see people. I'll walk out with you. Which way do you go? Just to the corner. 73 takes me right to the door, but they always get so full. Come here a minute, please. Yes, dear? Those two people who just went out, do you know them? Men and a girl, no, never saw them before, that I can remember. Well, what were they like? I don't know, dear, just a man and a girl. Oh, were they tall or short or young or old? Well, he was a bit taller than she was, not very tall, not very old, sort of, um, of medium people all round. Well, were they 16 or 60? Tell the truth, I didn't look at them particular, but I think they were, um, you know, 30-ish, maybe her bit younger. Anything the matter, Mr. Oh, Hannon? Bob, when you came in, did you see a man and woman leaving? No. There was no one coming out just now. Oh, miss, there must have been something about them you noticed. Well, I think she had a blue cape and he a raincoat. Anyhow, they came right by you, dear. Much nearer you than me. You saw them, didn't you? No, no, I, I didn't see them. I don't see things nowadays. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't realize. Well, that's all right. You weren't intended to. Both of medium height. Age, probably 25 to 35. Woman thought to be wearing a blue cape man, a, a raincoat. A woman used a perfume. The man breathed with a slight wheezing sound, as though having, having bronchial trouble. Anyway, there was something strange about his voice. The police are coming round right away. Okay. Now, be quiet. Let me finish this. The conversation went as follows. Uh, I don't want anything to do with it, Mr. Evans. I don't like the sound of it. Oh, you'll like the money, all right. And it'll be more than this last job, much more. But how do I know what you're going to do with it? What do you want me? Night of the ninth, same address. Then I take you down and you start the job on the 10th. All right, can I go now? Well, what's the hurry? Have another drink. No, no, I've got to get back. Her ladyship's going to a concert and there'll be no one to see to them. I'll walk out with you. Which way do you go? Just to the corner. 73 takes me right to the door, but they get so full. That's all there was. I couldn't hear anymore. Then they came out. Well? You done that verbatim, Mr. Hammond? That's the conversation word for word? Yes. You must have a remarkable memory. 
Well, it's my business to remember dialogue. Well, what do you think? Was that all there was, Mr. Hannon? Well, isn't that enough for you? There's something evil going on, isn't there? Well, there might be. Ma what do you mean, might be? Well, you tell us what you make of it, sir. I figure it out like this. This woman has something to do with children, probably a nursemaid. That's why she had to get back, because somebody else is going out, so that there'd be somebody there with the kids. Mm -hmm. Go on. She's employed by this lordship and ladyship. And this Mr. Evans she's talking to is trying to force her to do something wrong. Whatever it is, she doesn't want to do it. But she's afraid of Evans, scared to death of him, because of some hold he's got over her. Now, on the 10th, she's going to meet this other girl, Mary, get something from her and pass it to Evans. It could be that this other girl is a nursemaid, too, and that it's a plot to kidnap a child. Wait a minute, Mr. Hammond. I know they have kidnappings in America, but they're, they're very rare here, you know. Okay, okay, then maybe it's a robbery, but it's something, something very wrong. Mr. Hannon, you'll forgive me for saying this, but you're a dramatist and a very skillful one. The way you've recorded that conversation is very dramatic and convincing. I don't think Mr. Hannon's likely to give a ham performance, Inspector. Thank you, Bob. Look, Inspector, I've only recorded it the way they said it. Yes, but if you just take the words themselves, they could have a completely different meaning. Such as? Well, supposing this girl is employed, as you said, by a titled family. And supposing this man is just trying to entice her away to another job with an offer of higher money. More money than in last job. How about hand over to us later? It well, could... hmm? Sorry. it could be a temporary job. The girl Mary is leaving and they want someone to take over from her temporarily. Yes, but she says it's dirty, letting people down or trusting her. Well, that could be her present employer. She might not like letting herself be enticed away for more money. Oh, one of those old-fashioned servants we read about. Then why did Evans threaten her? I didn't hear that he actually did threaten her. But us. isn't it quite possible that he did during that part I couldn't hear? Quite possible. Look, Inspector, it seems to me you not only think I'm blind, but crazy. I told you it's my business to know how people talk, what they're thinking when they say things. And I tell you that girl was scared. No one's that scared just because someone suggests changing a job. Well, Mr. Hannon, you may very well be right. We're very obliged to you for getting in touch with us so promptly. Well, somebody has to act promptly because whatever it is is set for the 10th, which is just one week from today. Well, what are you going to do? Well, we haven't got a lot to go on, Mr. Hannon, but we shall make inquiries. And if in the meantime you should record anything further... All I know is on that tape, and you're welcome to play it through at any time. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hannon. We may take advantage of that. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Trading at the leash, aren't they? Can't wait to get started. Where are we now? Just passing under Waterloo Bridge. Festival Hall on the left. I never saw that. After my time, what's it like? Oh, modern. What's that noise? Helicopter coming into Waterloo Air Terminal. They won't do anything. Who? Those policemen. They think I'm making something out of nothing. Well, of course it's... Sure, sure. Nothing to go on. Possibly innocent conversation and so forth. But unless I'm going crazy, that girl was terrified. Maybe that's it. Maybe I am going crazy. Well, how does it look? Is it beautiful? Yes. Yes, very beautiful. View, buildings make it all so vivid, I can almost see it. Hey, 
Half past five. The sun must be just going down ahead of us. Any barges coming down? Yes, two lots. I know. And the river's gold now with the sun on it like that. And the barge is black against the gold. A slight wind that makes the water glitter so that it slaps and dances against the side of the boat. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's up? That, that perfume. That's it, I've got it. Jean? Yes, Phil? Jean, there's something I want to ask you. Do you remember back home three years ago? We were out on a rowboat somewhere. Yes. We were on Lake Cayuga driving through Ithaca. That's right. I was rowing, and it was hot. And you wiped my forehead with a handkerchief. Yes. There was perfume on that handkerchief. Uh, a perfume you used quite a lot then. Do you remember what it was? Yes. It was Plaisir de Moor. You still use it? No, I haven't used it for almost two years. It's too expensive. It is expensive. About the most expensive there is. Why? Well, that woman yesterday was using it. I got a whiff of it as she passed me. Will somebody please tell me what kind of nursemaid uses just about the most expensive perfume there is? She might have been given it by the master. I mean, that sort of thing still goes on, you know. Always will. Or she may have stolen it from her mistress. No, no. A servant can steal money or clothes or almost anything and get away with it. But if she steals a perfume, she's giving herself away every time she comes into her room. That's true, Phil. That's very true. A frightened nursemaid who uses expensive perfume. What does that add up to? Maybe it's on that tape. I put it to you. Here's a conversation that might have meant almost anything between two people who might have been almost anybody. Where can I go from that? Well, it's Mr. Hannon I'm thinking of, Inspector. You see, this, this is the first real thing that's brought him to life in a long time. And the question is, how real is this? It's very important to Mr. Hannon. Miss Lennox, I understand your concern and I sympathize. But what you need is a, well, a psychiatrist, not a police officer. Well, yes, you're right, Inspector. And I have no business taking up your time like this. But I, well, I, I thought if you could call him up and tell him that you... But tell him what? Well, th th that you were interested and that you were working on it. Miss Lennox, I give you my word that if anything comes out of this, or even looks like coming out of it, I'll get on to Mr. Hannard at once and be pleased to. money and forget it. But it's dirty somehow when people are trusting you. <laughs> Would you like me to say a little prayer? You promised when I went to his lordship that that was the last thing. Jean. Yes, Phil? Well, did they see you? Right away. How, are they getting anywhere? Oh, they're working like demons. They've been interviewing the barmaid and, and checking to see if they have anyone like Evans in their records. And, uh, and they've got a man watching the Eagle just in case those two should come back there. A and they've got another man. Bravo, that... bravo. An excellent performance. But you know perfectly well they're not doing a thing. They've just filed it under C for crackpots. Bob, is 73 a bus or a tram? A bus. Where does it go? Oh, a long way. I can't remember at the ends, but it goes along Oxford Street, down Park Lane, and along Knightsbridge. Phil, she was going back to her job, wasn't she? That's what she said. And her job was with somebody uh, with, a, with a title? A peer, because of his lordship, not a knight or a baronet. And her ladyship was going to a concert? That's right. How many lords are there, Bob? Including or excluding the Irish peerage? Oh, uh, I don't care. I don't know. 
Well, however many there are, there can't be so many that live in London on one particular bus route and have children of nursery age. And wives who went to a concert last night. Bob, there's a book for lords, isn't there? Oh, uh, there's Burke's Peerage, Baronetage, and Knightage of the United Kingdom. Ooh, we've got one here. Yeah. Oh, here's one. Baron Yalding of Hale, H-A-Y-L-E. Two sons, one daughter, heir, born 1949. Address, 46 Link Court, Knightsbridge. Telephone, Avenue, 7473. Well, I think that's all the possibles. Well, there's a Baron Zwemer in Park Lane, but I don't think he's got any children of nursery age. Well, how old is he? 78, never been married. Still, well, I... I think we can safely leave him out. How many? 20. Okay. Well, now, what we want is one whose wife went to a concert. Let's start calling them up. Well, you can't now. It's two o'clock in the morning. Oh. And I don't know about you two, but I'm exhausted. Oh, I'm sorry. You must be. I wasn't thinking. Bob, call Miss Lennox a taxi, would you? <laughs> Certainly. Phil, is it all right if I come back tomorrow? I really am interested. Oh, sure. Bob and I'll start on these phone calls first thing in the morning. I'll see you then. Good. Well, good night. Good night, Jean. Thanks for your help. That's all right. No. No, I I'm afraid your ladyship is misunderstanding me. I'm not giving a concert. I mean, I couldn't. It's just that I understood that you went to a concert on Tuesday. Oh, I see. I must have been misinformed. I'm sorry to have bothered you, your ladyship. No go. She says she never goes to concerts. She doesn't sound the slightest bit musical. Oh, so be Oh, hello. Uh, can I speak to Lady Sobey, please? I'm speaking for... Oh. Oh, really? I didn't know that... Yes, I see. I'm sorry to have troubled you. Deceased. Before or after the concert? Two months ago. All right, how many is that? Seventeen. Next, Lady Sillett. You stay with the phone, I'll get the door. Mayfair, one, two, oh, oh. Jean, we're, we're making the calls now. Oh, good. Hello, could I speak to Lady Surrette, please? I'm speaking for Mr. Philip Hannon. Yes. Hello, Lady Surrette. Good afternoon, Your Ladyship. Yes, I tried to get you on the Tuesday evening, but I believe you were at a concert. You were? Oh, I see. Uh, I'm speaking for Mr. Philip Hannon, the playwright. Yes, yes that's the one. Mr. Hannon wondered whether he could come over and see you sometime. Uh, there's a small matter on which he wanted your help. Uh, some more tea? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, another cake. No, thank you. Oh, I can't tell you how exciting it is for me having a famous play right here for tea with me, especially as I've been trying desperately to get tickets for your play, but I've had no luck at all. Well, if you'll allow me, Lady Sirretta, I'll be happy to leave my tickets for you at the box office any night you say. Oh, that is kind of you, Mr. Hannon. I do appreciate it. Uh, Lady Sirretta, you must think this very odd, our asking to come to see you like this. Oh, don't give it a thought. If one couldn't look forward to odd things happening, no one would ever want to get up in the mornings at all, would they? <laughs> no, I, I suppose not. But, you see, this is kind oh, of... Oh, just one thing. Could you possibly make it four tickets for this Saturday, then? Oh, yes, of course. Make a note of that, Bob. You see, we are dining with some old friends of my husband's, the Belmonts. They're a frightfully dreary couple. They're bird watchers, you know. Oh. Of course, I don't mind them watching, but they talk about it endlessly. And it just occurred to me that it would be a marvellous way to get through the evening. <laughs> now, where were we? 
I was about to ask you a question. Oh, yes, please, uh, please do. Well, it's a very small matter, but some friends of mine heard that your children's nurse... Oh, I've forgotten her name. Uh, Janet Murch? That's it, Janet Murch. That she might be leaving. My friends understood she's a very good nurse. Oh, she is perfectly marvellous. That's why I'm so annoyed with her. Uh, pardon me, ladies, sir. I, I got lost in there somewhere. Oh, it's, it's quite simple, really. You see, these are not my children. They're my grandchildren. So Miss Murch walking out on me like this just has me at my wit's end. Did Janet Murch give you any reason for leaving? Oh, yes, indeed. She just took another position, if you please. She said she was starting on the 10th. I called the agency that sent her to me, and I complained bitterly, but I got no satisfaction. Which agency? The Unity Domestic Bureau. Well, thank you, Lady Surratt. We, we've taken up enough of your time. Oh, not at all. I, I've enjoyed it. Would you mind if I asked you a funny sort of question? Oh, of course not. Do you ever use a perfume called Plaisir d'Amour? No, Mr. Hallam. Ought I do? No. No, not while you're using that charming belle de fleur that you have on now. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you again, Lady Surrette. Not at all. Goodbye. Goodbye. Did you get that address, Bob? Unity Domestic Bureau, Janet Merch. I did. Janet Murch. Yes. Janet Murch, I seem to recall the name. I'm sure we must have placed her sometime. Now, let me see. Ah, here we are. She's with Lady Surrette in Brook Street. Well, no, she's just left there. That's why I thought I might be able to get her. That's fair. Well, well. She's only been there a few months, too. I'm terribly anxious to get Miss Murch. I wonder if I might have her home address. <coughs> Let me see, Janet Murch's home address. I'm very sorry, madam. As I said, I'm very sorry, but we can't do that. After all, it wouldn't be very good business, would it, now? I mean, you could get in touch with the girl yourself, and then we'd lose our commission. I'll look after this lady, Miss Marston. Would you like to come in? Oh, I'm, I'm dreadfully sorry, Mr. Collins. I, I didn't think. No, of course you didn't. Have this chair. Oh, thank you. Well, now, I understand you're looking for a nursemaid. Well, yes. We've got some very good girls in our books. Well, as I told your assistant, I particularly wanted Janet Murch because she's been so highly recommended by Lady Sirret. Oh, we've got several others just as good, if not better. Let me just have a look. Hmm? Ah, yes. Now, here's a very excellent Scotch lass named MacDonald. Very good recommendations, too. Well, thank you very much. I'll think it over and let you know. I see. In that case, madam, perhaps I'd better just have your address. You never know. Janet Birch might come in, or perhaps, if not, we can find you somebody else. It's Mrs... Uh... Um, Mrs. Jean Lennox. Jean Lennox? 603, 603. Regent Court. Regent Court. Portman Square, West 1. Portman Square, West 1. Telephone? Um, arcade, 65... Four, nine. Arcade 6549. Mrs. Jean Lennox. Oh, thank you very much. Good day, madam. Thank you. I I'm sorry, Mr. Pillings. I didn't know. Really, I didn't. No one told me. Oh, go on, go on. Well? He was very tall, almost six feet. So I don't think he could be Evans. What sort of voice did he have? Oh, smooth and oily. He was very positive. Well, did he wheeze when he breathed? Well, if he did, I didn't hear it. I'm afraid that's a blind alley, Phil. I, I mean, the agency did look genuine. And after all, even if Janet Murch is your girl, there's no reason why the agency should be in on it. No, maybe not. Sorry, ma'am. 603, please. 603. Sixth floor. That's Mr. Hannon. Hannon? The name I've got here is Lennox. Well, 
603 is Mr. Hannum, ma'am. 603, right there, ma'am. Thank you. Excuse me, does Mrs. Lennox live here? I am from the Unity Domestic Bureau. It's about the situation. Oh, I see. Can I have your name, please? Alice MacDonald. All right. I'll just see if Mrs. Lennox is in. Won't you come in, please? Thank you. Excuse me one moment. tried to sell me. How did she find you here? Well, th th I gave this address because I thought if they got a hold of merch... Okay, they... okay. Bob, you take her into the living room. Jean, you keep her talking because I want to listen. Tell her that you're making these arrangements for me, that my, my family's coming over from America. Get it? Yes. Okay. I'll wait in here. I don't want her to know I can't see. Oh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, madam. Uh, won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. I hope I've come to the right place. Only the bureau said Mrs. Lennox, but the lift man said Mr. Hannon. Well, uh, yes, I'm Mrs. Lennox, and I was inquiring not for myself, but for Mr. Hannon, who lives here. Oh, I see. You see, Mr. Hannon's family may be coming over from America soon, and if they do, they'll need a nurse. Yes, madam. Only the bureau said there was someone else she particularly wanted, but, but if you couldn't get her, perhaps I would do. Someone named Janet Murch was recommended to me. You don't happen to know her? Murch? No, sir, I, I don't. Only the bureau said to show you my references. Oh, thank you, I'll take them. Oh, my, these are very good. Here, Phil, have a look at them. They're really very impressive, aren't they? Yes, very. Well, thank you very much. But as I said, Mr. Hannon's plans aren't quite definite yet. If he does need a nurse, we'll call you. If you'd like to leave your address... Oh, you can always reach me through the bureau. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Bob. Right here, sir. Go after that girl. Don't lose sight of her. Find out where she lives, and if you can, get a picture of her. Picture? What on earth for? She might be Merch. The barmaid seen her, Lady Surrette seen her. Now hurry up, you lose her. How will I get a photograph? With a camera, you idiot. Hurry. Camera, of course. Well, did you smell it? No, what? Did you hear it? What? Oh, you people with eyes. You're so busy looking, you never notice anything. She smelled of that perfume and that Scots accent of hers that was pure vaudeville. Then you really think she was Merch? She could be. It isn't the right sort of voice, but people can do things with their voices. that bus.
may I interest you in this new clean I'm at? It's absolutely marvelous. It cleans all the spots right away. May I show you? It's absolutely wonderful. Oh, here. Thank you. Very well, sir. Where do I go with this? Over there, sir. Just by the head of the ashtray. Good day, sir. Uh, three pounds ten, is that right? Uh, three pounds ten shillings. Yes. Yeah. And uh, ready for use? Ready for immediate use. Yeah. Shall I wrap it up for you, sir? No, no. I'll take it just as it is. Very good, sir. Please. I'm in a hurry. It's certainly like old something. <laughs> All right, you marry me, and I promise you faithfully I'll give up cooking. That's the most refreshing proposal I've ever had. Well, I'll have you know I don't go around just proposing to anybody. I've only proposed twice in my life. Both times to the same man. I know, Jean. I wish I could see it your way. But I can't. I'll eat your dinner. It'll get cold. Hello, Bob. Hello. Well, did you get anything? Yes. Good morning. Yo, wet. I can smell that tweed suit over here. Yes, it's the rain, you know. It makes you wet if you stand out in it for hours on end without a coat. Well, where did she go? Well, first of all, she... Went into Barker's in Kensington, where she bought something. Well, what? Well, I don't know. I was busy buying the camera. Her parcel was a long one, about two feet long, and, well, you know. She came out of Barker's. Rain started. Took a bus to Hammersmith. Still raining. Looked in a chemist's window, went into chemist's, came out again. Raining. Went into a cafe and had a cup of tea and one bun. Oh, it could have been one tart. The view was obscured with the rain on the window. Went into chain store, walked round store, walked round store again, came out. Excuse me, it's been smudged as here. Oh, yes, I see. Raining heavily. Do you want me to go on? There's a lot more like that, just like that. But did you find out where she lives? I don't believe that she has a home. If she has, she despises it. She wouldn't be caught dead in it. She fast prefers to wander around the streets. But you must have left her someplace. Excuse me, Mr. Hannon, but there is no must about it. As a matter of fact, she left me. Oh, no. 
as I, I followed her to a building, 224 Stoner Street. She went inside. I, I waited outside. I waited and waited and waited. After three hours, I began to think things looked a little bit fishy, so I went inside. It was an empty sort of warehouse. No sign of McDonald's. But do you think she ducked you deliberately? I don't know. There were at least four perfectly reasonable exits back and side that she could have used. Well, that certainly was a dead-end street. Well, never mind, Bob. I think you did very well. Here, have a cup of hot coffee. Oh, thank you. Anyhow, I got her photograph. You did? Yeah. Except that I'm... I'm not quite sure that I, you know, turn the film on properly. No, Mr. Hannon, no, this isn't Janet Murch. But is it anything like her? Not at all. This girl's a bit older and quite different. Have you ever seen this girl in a photograph? No, never that I can think of. You're sure it's not just a bad photograph? But it's a very good photograph, taken in conditions <laughs> Of extreme difficulty. Oh, I have a feeling there's something perfectly fascinating going on. I do wish you'd tell me what it is. Uh, I wish I could, too. But frankly, Lady Surratt, I can't explain it even to myself just now. Oh. Well, if you ever feel you can, please call me. It'll make my dinner table conversation for the next six months, and I never have anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again, Lady Surratt. Thank you. Thank you. She's got no right not to be Birch. She even smelled right. And you can't tell me it's just coincidence. Two nursemaids using the same expensive perfume. Frankly, Mr. Hannon, I didn't smell it. You? I could cook fish and chips under your nose and you'd never smell it. When I first met McDonald, I didn't have a cold. She was the cause of my catching it. Smells are very tricky, Phil. If you have a certain scent in mind, you can always make yourself believe you can smell it. That's perfectly true. I can always smell escaping gas whenever I... I... <laughs> Give my mind to it. What are you two trying to tell me? That I've invented this out of whole cloth? Oh, of course Because not. if that's what you think, will you both please stop humoring me? Stop treating me as if I was some child whom you had to keep amused with a game of let's play detective. Drive Miss Lennox home, would you please, Bob? Never mind, Bob. You go on up with him. I'll get a taxi. Who's that? Oh. Why didn't you take Jean home? She uh, took a taxi. Thought you shouldn't be alone. Now I need a nursemaid. Miss Long Holiday. What could be simpler than that? But you don't understand. I, I, I might get to like it. And... You won't have time for that, my dear. No, Mr. Evans, no. I won't do it. I won't. It's no, no good, Mr. Mr. Evans. I'm after you. Just five minutes. Sure, I know it's unreasonable, you but I'm not a reasonable you man. No if McDonald isn't Murch, and you're not the little guy at the agency, now come on, put who is Murch? Lady Surrett? And who are you, Mr. Evans? Are you, Mr. Evans? Did 
Dicky Dite, show a light, or else the dogs can't follow. Or else the dogs can't follow. Follow? Did you call, Mr. Hannon? No, no, I sang. Bob, I want to put an advertisement in the newspapers. Which ones? All of them. If Janet Murch is in need of help or advice, will she call Arcade 6549? Well, that's our number. I know, I know. Strictest confidence. Could you let him do this? Well, I told you this morning I didn't think. Think what? I just read this ridiculous advertisement of yours. When did you start reading classified ads? Well, I, I talked to Bob this morning and he told me what you'd done. Do you realize what you're setting yourself up for? Of course. I'm trying to find Janet Murch and Evans, particularly Evans. But don't you realize that you're telling whoever they are that you know something and you're telling them where to find you? Bill, this is the last thing in the world I want to say to you, but you've got to face it. You can't afford to get mixed up in any violence. Hello? Arcade 6549. Mr. Hannon's apartment. Oh. Yes. It's a woman. She says she's Janet Merch. Give me that phone. You get on the extension and take a tape of this. This is Philip Hannon speaking. Hello. What's the good news? Is this Miss Janet Murch? That's right. Janet Murch. You want to contact me, and I want to contact you, honey. Do I need help and advice? I certainly do. Where are you speaking from? From the bar docks. Best bar in London. Why don't you come down and have one? <laughs> Whoever that was, it wasn't Janet Murch. Oh, just a drunk who read the advertisement and rang up for fun. Well, I'm wrong. It's a bloke called um, Philip Annan, if that means anything to you. Hmm? Now, look, you don't have to be concerned about me. There are day and night porters downstairs. There are two locks and a chain on that door. And I've got Bob. I'm defended like Fort Knox. What about you? Me? Well, you're in this, you know. You went to the agency, and if the agency is in it, they'll be looking for you, too. And you live by yourself. Oh, nonsense, What Phil. do you mean, nonsense? Don't you live by yourself? Well, yes. Well, I... I don't want you alone in that apartment for the next few days. Bob, get Miss Lennox some rooms in a hotel. Well, now, look, if you think I'm going to move out of a perfectly good apartment for some lousy hotel... Take her along, Bob. A reasonably nice hotel. Maybe even a private bath. You always were the most impossible man. Goodbye, Jean. Goodbye, Phil.
love. I have to go out. Would you be a dear and take care of Pokey for me? I'd take her with me, but it's a seance, and Madame Fabio's medium doesn't get on with Pokey at all. Well, I, I was just going out. Oh, dear. But I need to make a phone call. I I'll be back in a few minutes. Oh, Janet, you are a duck. I'll wait for you. Arcade 6549? Is yes. This is Janet Murch, isn't it? Yes. I recognize your voice. Well, never mind about that now. This is Philip Hannon speaking. I inserted the advertisement. Except to contact you. That's right. I want to talk to you. Can you come here? No. I, I can't leave home. Where are you speaking from? From, from my home. I can't leave here. But if you could meet my father, he'd bring you. Can he come over here? 813 Regent Court, Portman Square. No, but anywhere else you say. Why not here? Someone might, might see it. All right. Do you know a pub called the Eagle near here? Yes. I'll meet your father there now. It'll only take me a few no, minutes. No, not now. In an hour would be better. All right, I'll be there. Goodbye. No, I'm sorry, sir. He doesn't seem to answer. Can I take a message for you? Oh, all right, sir. Simmons, would you mind taking a message for Mr. Matthews? Not at all, Mr. Hannon. Tell him I've had a telephone call and that I've gone to the Eagle. Ask him to follow at once. All right, sir. I'm Thank so you. sorry. Where is this, Governor? Why, you're on the north side of Portman Square. Well, where's Baker Street? It's just 23 paces behind you. Here, take my arm. I'll show you. Thanks. It sort of mists up my spectacles, and I can't see any more than if I'd got my head in a bucket. Must be a great handicap, having to wear glasses. a brave man. Oh, it's you, dear. Good evening. Straight scotch, no ice, isn't it? Yes. Do you know, I think you're wonderful the way you get about. If you hadn't told me, I should never have known that you... I suppose you sort of uh, get used to it. Don't ever believe that. You get so there are some things you can do, but you never get used to it. Is there anybody here? Not a soul, dear. No one's coming out in a night like this, even to get to the water hole. I wonder if you'd help me. Of course. I'm expecting to meet somebody here. Should be a middle-aged man. Take a good look at him and see if he's the same one I asked you about the other day. A and get him talking. I want to hear his voice. If he is the same one, cough. But I told you I didn't get a good look at him. Well, if he's anything like the one you remember, cough. All right. If you cough, I'll go. And you say, good night, Mr. Doyle. Otherwise, come over and give me a drink. 
If I think it's the same man, I call and I say good night, Mr. Doyle. Okay, dear. Now, can you tell me exactly where the pinball machine is? Yes, over there on the right. No, a little this way. That's it. You've been very kind. You see, I particularly don't want him to know about my eyes. Don't you know? No. All right, ducks. Whatever you say. Thanks. Half a mile, please. Yes, sir. There you are, sir. Oh, thank you, ma'am. What a night, eh? Ah, it is that. You can't see your hand before your face. You remember the bad fog we had in the war? I reckon this is thicker. <laughs> Thank you. I think it's the same one. He looks quite a respectable little cuff. Stand in front of him and talk so I'll know where he is. He's on the third bar stool from the door. Well, I certainly didn't expect to see any customers out tonight, and here I am with two. Well, sometimes people have to go out, even in a fog. Good evening. Nasty night, isn't it? It is that, sir. Makes everybody late for things. You're not by any chance Mr. Hannon. Yes, I am. I'm Mr. March. Let's sit down to a table. Well, uh... I'll take a drink over for you, ducks. Here's a nice table. How's that? OK, dear? Thanks. Good evening, sir. Oh, Mr. Matthews, I've got... And not a word can I get out of her, except that she wants to see you. But there's something not right, sir. Not right at all, and not been for a long time. Has she ever mentioned a man named Evans to you? Evans? No, no, never mentioned that name. No, nor any other. I tell you, she's been that close. Well... Cheers. Cheers. How long ago did Mr. Hannon leave? About 20 minutes ago, Mr. Matthews. It's only a little bit of a distance. Uh, do you mind if I take your arm? I'm not used to these fogs. Why, of course, sir. Well, it seems to have thinned out considerably. Yes, it has. Just a minute, sir, now, while I switch on the light. Ah, that's better. Now we can see what we're doing. Now, if you'd come upstairs, I'm afraid it's rather in time. We're right up at the top. Careful. Take the foot. There we are.
It's a long climb, isn't it? It's not much of a place here, as you see. Here we are now. Now, I'll take you in, and then I'll leave you together because she won't talk if I'm there. I know. Come in, sir. Mr. Hannon! Mr. Hannon! Where are you? Bob! Up here! Up high! Uh, Mr. Hannon! Stay where you are! Don't move! Don't move till I get to you! What's the matter? Man up there! Come on! Follow me! Step and I would have been missing too. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Filthy night, isn't it? It is that, Mr. Pillings. Well, did you see Mr. Hannon? Yes, Mr. Pillings. And it's all done. Oh, well, that's good news, Joe. Very good news indeed. And save everybody a lot of trouble. Oh, no. Yes. Joe's just come in. He says Mr. Hannah won't be needing a nursemaid anymore. to tell you very well done, Joe. Oh, thank you, Mr. Pillings. Like some tea, Joe? Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Pillings. Not now. I find if I drink tea at night, it keeps me awake. me that you'll never do that again. <laughs> well, it isn't the sort of thing folks do do again, is it? You know, Jean, the strangest thing happened to me out there on that ledge. I thought I didn't care about living anymore, but I was wrong. 
I found that out when it came right to it. I cared desperately. Do you know what I'm trying to say, Jean? Yes, Phil. Oh, only don't get yourself killed proving you want to live. Excuse me, Mr. Hannon. Inspector Groening and Detective Sergeant Luce are here. Oh, are they? We'll show them in. Won't you come in, please, Inspector? Morning, Mr. Hannon. Hello, Inspector. I'm told you've been having some adventures, Mr. Hannon. Adventures? No. If you have a dramatic mind, you might think someone had tried to break my neck. But I'll bet there's a perfectly innocent explanation for that. Mm. Mr. Hannon, according to the barmaid at the Eagle, you were expecting this man. Why were you meeting him? Did you know who he was? No, but I knew who he wasn't. He wasn't Evans. Outside of that, I only know what he called himself. The father of a girl named Janet Murch. I see. You've been making inquiries for her, haven't you? Advertising and so on. That's right, Inspector. What was your interest in Janet Murch, Mr. Hammond? Well, she was the girl I heard in the bar. And you contacted her? Yes, I spoke to her on the telephone last night. Inspector, you have to find Murch, and you have to find her fast. Mr. Hannon, Janet Murch may have been associated with criminals, as you thought, so that's by no means certain. But there's one thing that is certain. Whatever anybody was asking her to do tonight or tomorrow, crime or no crime, she won't do it now. Her body was taken out of the river early this morning. She was murdered? Yes. A nasty job with a knife. And what's more, I'm responsible. You responsible? Yes, with that advertisement. She saw the advertisement, but so did Evans. And Evans knew I was onto something through her. So he murdered her. And then tried to have me murdered too. I killed that poor kid as surely as if I'd shot her. Inspector, we have to get Evans. And we have to get him before tomorrow. Mr. Hannon, as I told you before... But it's starting, Inspector. It's the ninth today. It's happening somewhere out there now. You must remember, Mr. Hannon, there are nine million people out there. Nine million. And none of us have ever seen Evans. And only you have even heard him. whiskey to scramble eggs. Well, if it helps him get through today, I'm all for it. Well, so am I, but it seems to have no more effect on him than milk on a baby. I'll go see what I can do. Oh, uh, does he know I stayed here last night? He knows that today is the 10th. That's all he knows. Yes, Phil. Well, you didn't just come in. No, I stayed here last night. Stayed here? Yes, in your spare room. Well, I hope you were comfortable. Can I fix you one? Phil, at 10 o'clock in the morning... At 10 o'clock in the morning and at half past 10 on the 10th hour of the 10th day. Let's drink to that. You don't mind that I stayed here. Bob has to go out occasionally, and I... And you felt there was a job for an assistant keeper? Well, the facts support that. Seems I can't get off the string without nearly getting myself killed, and other people quite killed. But you didn't know. I didn't know Evans was that desperate. Well, how could you? Playing that thing over and over again. You must know it by heart. I knew it by heart to start with. But you can know your words without knowing what they mean. Somewhere that thing is trying to tell me about Evans. Who he is and what it is he's going to do today. But I can't seem to hear it. And the rest of you can only see. You wouldn't. No, my dear, I wouldn't do that. Not just as long as you do as you told. Now, come on, pull yourself together. There's nothing to cry about. All 
right, Mr. Evans. You win. Jean, you over by the window? Yes. It's still foggy? A little. It's almost clear now. What do you see? You know, Phil. You told me the first time I came here. That's right. Houses of Parliament, Big Ben, Charing Cross Station. Station. I wonder if Mary would be arriving at a station. What train would she be on? A suburban train? The boat train? What's that? A boat on the river? Yes. Well, why is he sounding if it isn't foggy? They often do. That's right. Leaving and arriving and so forth. I remember the time I was coming over in the Queen Mary. Mary. Mary on the 10th. Bob! 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 Yes, sir. Call Tunard and find out when the Queen Mary arrives. Queen Mary? Yes, and hurry. Why? Don't you get it? It was then when that pinball machine made all the racket. I missed a bit there. I heard it as Mary arrives, but it could have been the Queen Mary arrives. And you go down to meet her. Could have been down to meet her at Southampton. And she's not a girl, but a ship. They were taking Janet Murch down to meet somebody off Hello. that boat. I want some information, please. Can you tell me what time the Queen Mary docked at Southampton? Well, have you got them? Thank you. Thank you. Look, hold on a moment, please. The Queen Mary docked at 6 o'clock this morning. The first boat train should have arrived in London just after 10. What time is it now? 10.30. All right, look, get her passenger list. Find out what rich first-class passengers are traveling with children. And get after that fireball policeman. Yes? Well, thank you very much indeed. I'm sorry to bother you. Goodbye. Well, that crosses them off. Now, that's Mr. and Mrs. Richard Avery from Houston, Texas. The two children brought their own nurse with them. Isn't there one more? Uh, yes, the Argentinians, the Demestris. Ah, yes, the Demestris. We haven't been able to get hold of them yet. They've taken a flat in Kensington. Anyhow, the daughter there is 17. They'd hardly need a nurse for her, would they? Still, we'll go on and try and find them, Mr. Hannon, to be on the safe side. I hope you're wrong, Mr. Hannon. Inspector, I don't want to be right. I'm just scared sick that I might be. Nerves are the cold, but I'm freezing to death. Oh, sorry, there's a blanket back here somewhere. Mm. Here we are. Mm. Yeah, that better? Mm, thank you. You seem to be taking forever up there. It's only been ten minutes. They know what they're doing. They're just active. They don't know what they're doing. Seventeen-year-old girl wouldn't need a nursemaid. I'm completely lost. I can't figure it.
What's that? What happened? I think it's Mrs. De Maestra. I want you to cover all the gates in the gardens. We're looking for a 17-year-old girl in a wheelchair with a nursemaid wearing white uniform, black shoes, dark blue cape and cap. Hurry. Right. She's an invalid? Well, her father told me she's a child who never grew up. They keep her with them always. Those poor people. Jean? Yes? Any luck? No. Phil, don't you think we ought to go home? It's getting awfully cold. No. I'm not an awful lot of use, but I want to stick around just in case. Good evening, Inspector. What did they find? It's an invalid chair, the upright kind. I think it'll come down so that you can lie flat in it. Anything in it? Yes, a uh, 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 robe and a, and a pillow and a, uh, what do you call it, a, a gollywog. A what? A gollywog. I don't think we have them in America. They're kind of a, a soft doll with a, with a black face. A soft doll? Yes, it, it's rather a large one. Looks new. Inspector. What is it, Mr. Hammond? Oh, the doll. Could I please have it for a minute? What for? I just want to hold it. There won't be any fingerprints on it. All right. into the department store in the toy department and bought something a package about two feet long inspector yes mr handel if you want to find the person who handled this last and handled it quite a lot I suggest you come with me to 224 Stoner Street. You mean McDonald? I don't know who I mean by now, but you followed that perfume to Stoner Street. But it's an empty house. Of course it is. If you kidnapped a child, where would you take it? To Claridge's? Well, how about it, Inspector? Are you willing to take another chance on one of my long shots? If so, we'd better hurry. Mr. Matthews, you know where this place is. You better come with us. Lennox, you died, Mr. Hammond, home. Oh, yes, of course, Inspector. But Evans may be at that place, and you all know him. Mr. Hammond, if you're right about this, you've seen more with no eyes than most of us with two. But this is where things might get rough, and if they did, it's no place for you. I'm sorry. Come on.
wake up them, Mr. Hannon. Child's there? Yes. She's a bit sleepy. They'd given her something, but she's quite all right. Look, the inspector wants to speak to you. Hold on. Well, Mr. Hannon, I congratulate you. Yes, you were quite right. Have you got Evans? Well, there are two men, but we don't know which is Evans yet. But one of them is an old friend of ours called Teapot Charlie. He's had a good many different names at one time or another, and I dare say Evans is one of them. Now, the other one answers pretty closely to the barmaid's description of your Mr. Murch. Yeah, but how about MacDonald? Well, there is a woman, but she's not the one Mr. Matthews followed. Not MacDonald? Oh, well, that's funny. Oh, we got the nets out for her. Shouldn't take long to pick her up. I see. Any trouble? No, no, they came like lambs. Oh, then I wouldn't have been so much in the way after all, would I, Inspector? <laughs> Hmm? Hello? Hello? Inspector? Hello? Hello? Well, he's hung up. I'm afraid he's still pretty sore. Oh, there you are. I thought I'd lost you. Well, congratulations. Not at all. You're welcome. Well, that appears to be that. Did they get them? Oh, yes, yes. Inspector Grovening and the British police arrived in the nick of time. Well, wonders never cease. Well, while you're sitting here in the dark moping, I'm going to fix myself a drink. Oh. Help yourself if you have anything to drink, too. But personally, I think I'm going to go to bed. Don't worry. I'll get out. Just as soon as I finish this drink, I'll be gone. Here's to Philip Hannon. It's no good congratulating him on a good job. All you get's a grunt. It's no good wishing him happiness because he doesn't want it and won't have it. He'd rather be lonely and tragic. It's no good wishing him luck because for him, all luck must be bad luck. So here's to Mr. Hannon, the man for whom something must always go wrong or not be complete enough so that he can sit and mope about it. To Mr. Hannon, who's so proud he won't let anybody help him. Who doesn't want any help? Even if it's only across the street. Shall I call you a taxi? Or is there anything else you want to say? on his way home now. There's nothing to stay for. No, I guess there is. Goodbye. Goodbye, Jean.
Jean. Jean. Bob. Come in, Mr. Evans. We're equal now. Not afraid of the dark, are you? Come in, Mr. Evans. Come in, Mr. Evans. We're equal now. Not afraid of the dark, are you? Come in, Mr. Evans. Come in, Mr. Evans. Today is the 10th. I've been expecting you. Not afraid of the dark, are you? Come in, Mr. Evans. We're equal now. Not afraid of the dark, are you? Come in, Mr. Evans. Come in, Mr. Evans. We're equal now. Not afraid of the dark, are you? Come in, Mr. Evans. Come in, Mr. Evans. Today, I've been expecting you. 
Not afraid of the dark, are you? Come in, Mr. Evans. Where are you now? Not afraid of the dark, are you? You have to kill me, Mr. Evans. I know too much. Come in, Mr. Come in, Mr. Evans. Today is the We're tip. equal now. I've been expecting. Not afraid of the dark, are you? Not afraid of the dark, Come in. are you? Come in, Come Mr. In, Evans. Mr. Evans. Today is We're the equal now. I've been expecting. Not afraid of the dark, Not are you? Not afraid of the dark, Come in, are Mr. You? Evans. Come in, Mr. Evans. the shots. What was it? Was it Evans? It was Evans, all right, but I don't know. Come here. It's a woman. It's McDonald. You mean that she, McDonald, and Evans are the same? Of course. I told you. She smelled right and she sounded right. I should have thought of it long ago. But if two people go past you and you smell perfume and you're told that one is a man, you, you naturally think the perfume's on the other. I thought that till three minutes ago when I got hold of her slim wrist. She's dead? Yes. I'm sorry. No, thanks, Jean. Phil, there's one thing I want to know. What's that? When you sent me away last night, did you know that Evans was going to come here? I didn't know. I, I just thought maybe. The police were after a bunch of kidnappers, and I was after Evans, and Evans was after me, not knowing how much I knew or how soon I might figure it out. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Afraid of me. Not of the police. Me. And yet you sent me away. I had to, honey, don't you see? I just had to get Evans. I couldn't go after him, so I had to let him come to me, don't you see? Yes, but just the same, I think you should have at least let What me... sort of a day is it out, Foggy? <laughs> no, it's clear now. Well, take me out on the roof and show me. Come on. Can't you lend a guy a helping hand who can't even see? Well, sure. <laughs> What do you see? Well, it's just the same as you remember it. That's right. Just as I remember. 